Hello everyone, welcome back. So, so today's problems are mainly based on the chapter rotation. Okay. Okay. So let's get into the first problem. The question it's, we have been given a uniform ring whose mass and radius is given and it's performing pure rolling about the horizontal surface. Now the velocity of the center of the ring is V naught. Okay. Okay. And uh, if at the given instant, the kinetic energy of the ring, kinetic energy of the semicircular arc AOB. So they're talking about the bottom half of the ring. So they're giving its kinetic energy as lambda mv naught squared. So we have to basically find out lambda. Okay. So the question is asking us to find the kinetic energy of just the bottom part of the whole ring. Okay. So yeah, give this problem a try guys. So, and then check out the solution. Okay. Okay. So this is the given situation. The center's velocity is given to be v naught. Now, obviously it's given to be rolling without slipping. So we can say velocity of the center is radius times radius multiplied by the angular velocity of the ring. Okay. Now in this question, we can take the help of the fact that the bottommost point is the instantaneous axis of rotation. So basically we can consider this entire ring to be performing a fixed axis rotation about this bottommost point, right? That's the definition of the instantaneous axis, right? So basically if I take some point X on the ring, if I join this point to the axis of rotation and I call this distance as r. So its speed, so its velocity vector will be perpendicular to this r and its magnitude is going to be omega multiplied by r. Okay, so we can do this for any point on the, any point on the ring. But the thing is, if we have some kind of an arbitrary rigid body, which is performing fixed axis rotation about some particular axis of rotation, right? And with an angular velocity of omega, let's say, then the kinetic energy possessed by the rigid body in this case is just half moment of inertia above the axis of rotation multiplied by omega squared, right? So, so this is a very straightforward result from the topic of fixed axis rotation, right? So, so here also we can use the same idea. So we know the instantaneous axis of rotation is to be treated like a fixed axis at this moment. So say for a second, we want to write the entire kinetic energy of the ring. Then all we have to do is find the moment of inertia of the ring about the instantaneous axis of rotation and do half I omega squared. Okay. So that will give us the total kinetic energy of the ring. So the moment of inertia for a ring about its central axis is MR squared, right? Okay. So now if you want the moment of inertia about the IAOR, we'll just add an MD square, right? So, and the, here the distance between the axes is R. So the I about the instantaneous axis for the complete ring is 2MR squared. If you want the kinetic energy possessed by the entire ring, it will be half I about the instantaneous axis times omega squared, which is actually m r square omega square, which is also equal to m v naught squared. Okay. So this is the Ke put possessed by the entire ring. Okay. So a little, that's a little bit of theory. Now let's talk about the problem. So that's how we calculated for the entire ring. Now for the half ring, what uh, first let's try to draw a diagram, right? So in order to figure out the kinetic energy of the half ring, we can just take the diagram of the half ring and try to figure out the moment of inertia of this part about the instantaneous axis and do half I omega squared. Okay. And we'll get the kinetic energy of this half ring, right? Okay. So now the only tricky part is how do we find the moment of inertia about the instantaneous axis of rotation? So for this, uh, we'll, so first we'll write down the moment of inertia about this point O, right? So I about O is it's pretty straightforward. So each mass is at a distance of R from the point O. So its moment of inertia is just going to be MR squared. But the mass of the half ring is m by 2. So this will be m r square by 2. Okay. So now the thing is we need the moment of inertia about the center of mass. So let's say the center of mass of this semi ring is somewhere over here. Now why do we need the moment of inertia about the center of mass? And because that is needed to use the parallel axis theorem. Right. As we'll see in a moment. So basically the center of mass is at a distance of 2 r by pi from the center of curvature. Right. So now using parallel axis theorem, we know that the I about any parallel axis is equal to the moment of inertia about the, about the parallel axis passing through the center of mass plus M times distance between the axis squared. So this is what parallel axis theorem states, right? So here we know I about O so that we can also write it as I about the center of mass axis plus mass times distance between the axis squared. So here mass is M by two. So I'm just going to write it as M by two. So now we can solve this to find ICM and we'll get the ICM as this particular value. Okay. Now, once we have ICM, we can once again use parallel axis theorem to find I about the instantaneous axis of rotation. 
So for that, we need this distance over here. So the total distance is R. We have to subtract 2R by from 2R by pi from the total distance. So it will be R 1 minus 2 by pi. So the I about the instantaneous axis, which I'm going to call it as A for now, will be ICM plus plus MD squared. So this will be M by 2 times R 1 minus 2 by pi squared. Okay. So now let's try to, so now let's just calculate what this turns out to be. Okay, so after solving, we'll get uh, this as the moment of inertia about the instantaneous axis of rotation. So now the kinetic energy of the ring AOB is just going to be half IA, which is MR squared 1 minus 2 by pi times the omega. And the omega is going to be, we figured out initially, it is V0 by R squared. And this gives you the answer as 2 by 11 MV0 squared. So basically the coefficient is 2 by 11. They wanted the value of 11 times the coefficient. So that turns out to be 2. Okay, so the answer to this question is 2. So, so if you observe the kinetic energy of the bottom half is 2 by 11 mv0 squared. So the kinetic energy of the upper part, this is the total kinetic energy, which we figured out initially as mv0 squared, minus the kinetic energy of the lower part. Okay, and this gives you the answer is 9 by 11 mv0 squared. So if you figured out the percentage values, the bottom half comprises only 18% of the total kinetic energy. Whereas the upper part comprises of 82% of the kinetic energy. And this is pretty intuitive to understand because the points lying on the upper half of the semi ring, right? These are further away from the instantaneous axis, right? So these points have greater magnitudes or velocities. So they will contribute to a larger amount for the kinetic energy. Okay. So yeah, that was it for this question. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, so in this question, we have a rod whose length is L and it forms an angle theta with the horizontal and it strikes a frictionless floor at A with a center of mass velocity as V0 and no angular velocity. Okay, so this rod was initially just translating and it is just about to hit the ground. Assuming the impact at A is perfectly elastic, so the, so the description of the collision at this point A uh, of the with the ground is given to be elastic okay now the angular velocity the angular velocity of the rod immediately after the impact is what we have to find okay so let's try to draw a diagram first okay guys so this is the diagram of the situation initially each point on the rod was moving down with the velocity of v naught so now this end a of the rod collides with the ground so basically there will be some interaction force from the ground which is just going to include the normal force right because the floor is actually frictionless and this normal and this normal as you can see provides an impulse such that the rod will gain an angular velocity omega and its velocity of the center and the velocity of the center of mass will also change so let's try to draw an after picture okay so after the collision the normal reaction will become zero and the center of mass let's say it rebounds up with some velocity of v and let's say the angular velocity of the rigid body after the collision is some omega okay so this is the before situation normal x gives it an omega and changes the v and the other external force that is acting on the system is the force of gravity okay okay so now let's observe the point a once again so before collision so the point a before collision its velocity was v naught in the vertically downward direction right and let's try to find out the velocity after collision so after collision, it will get the translational velocity of the center of mass. And due to the rotational component, it will be omega multiplied by the distance from the center, right? So this distance, let's say it is L by 2. So the rotational component will be omega L by 2. Okay. And the resultant of these two is the resultant velocity of the point A. Uh, once again, what did we do? Firstly, we wrote the velocity of the point A with respect to the center. Now with respect to the center, the point A can only have a perpendicular component of velocity, which is omega multiplied by L by 2. And then we added the velocity of center of mass vectorially to the point A. And this will be the final velocity of point A. Okay. So now it was given to us that the collision at the point A was elastic, right? So which means the separation velocity and the approach velocity uh, is going to be the same. So this angle with the horizontal was given to be theta. So even this angle is going to be theta. So what is the separation velocity of the point A from the ground? So it will be V plus omega L by 2 cos theta, right? So the separation component must be equal to the approach component as the collision is elastic. So from here we get our first equation that is V naught equals V plus omega L by 2 cos theta. Okay. So from here we get one equation in V and omega. So we just need one more equation. Okay. And that equation we can 
take the help of the angular momentum conservation. So now the thing is, this normal reaction from the ground is going to be an impulsive force, right? So let's write it down. So N is going to be an impulsive. An impulsive force we can define as, is uh, generally defined as any force that brings about a large change in the velocity of the center of mass in a short duration of time. So these, so the collision of the rod with the ground lasts for a very short duration, right? So for a few microseconds, let's say. So within that duration, if you observe the momentum of the center of mass, went from downward phasing to upward phasing, right? So that is a sudden change of momentum. And that f the, and the force responsible for the change in momentum is a normal reaction. So the, so according to impulse momentum theorem, we know the impulse due to all the external forces acting on a body is responsible for the change in linear momentum. It's responsible for the change in linear momentum of the center of mass of the body. So here in the sigma f, we'll include both gravity and normal. But the thing is we can ignore mg because it, because if we just break it down as integral of mg dt plus integral of n dt, it's the normal, it's the impulse due to the normal that is causing the sudden change in momentum. So here we can just ignore the impulse due to gravity. Okay. Now we don't really have to use the impulse equations in this question because we can use the angular momentum conservation. Okay. So let's move this to the side. Okay, so now the point that we are going to be choosing to conserve angular momentum should be a point about which the torque of normal reaction should be zero. Why? Because if we want to conserve the angular momentum L, right, so then, then the net torque about that point must be zero. But the thing is here, so and we can also say dL vector by dt is equal to the net external torque on the bo body, right? Here if I observe, if I write it as dL vector equals tau dt and if I integrate on both sides I can see that the change in angular momentum is equal to integral of the net external torque times dt. So this is basically the angular impulse you could say due to all forces and this is the change in angular momentum okay. So here once again we are using the same idea that we discussed over here because we can ignore the impulse due to mg for this short duration of collision the tau external will consist of the torque due to mg and normal. Now the thing is we know that the impulse due to mg is a very negligible quantity as the collision duration is very short integral of mg dt is very small. So we can just neglect. So mg is not a concern for us but the normal reaction is. So for example if you're choosing the center of mass and trying to conserve momentum about that point and if you try to conserve the angular momentum about that point the impulse the angular impulse of the normal reaction, you have to consider that, right? Otherwise, you'll get a wrong answer. Whereas, if you choose the point that is just below the point A on the ground, so I'm talking about this point, let's call it as A dash. If you consider this point, I want you to observe normal reaction directly passes through this point, right? So, there is no torque of normal about this point, but there is torque about mg, right? But the idea here is that the, the impulse due to mg can be neglected for this short duration of the collision. So basically, if we choose that point A, this tau, x, tau due to n will be just zero, and the torque of mg is going to be mg l by two cos theta, right? And we do this times dt. But we earlier discussed that the impulse, so this is just l by two cos theta times the impulse of mg, right? And the impulse of mg is negligible for this short duration of collision and hence we can say that this is approximately zero and we can conserve the angular momentum about this fixed point a dash on the ground so yeah it took some time to explain it but uh, once you once you're clear with this it is actually pretty easy so now we can just move on to the conserving part okay so now the angular momentum of a rigid body about any fixed origin or any non-accelerating origin so here we chose the point as a dash, right? If we want to write it, this is just equal to m RCM cross VCM plus the moment of inertia about the center of mass of the rigid body multiplied by omega vector. Okay, so this is the general result, which uh, if you guys have done the rotational motion part, you would know you would be knowing of this formula, right? Now here RCM is obviously the position vector joining a dash to the center of mass of the rigid body. And omega is the angular velocity of the rigid body. And I is the moment of inertia about the center of mass axis. Okay. Okay. So now just before collision, the 
body didn't have any angular velocity so we'll just have the first term right and rcm cross vcm would just yield r this distance this horizontal distance multiplied by v naught so this would be m so this distance is l by 2 and this is theta so the horizontal distance is l by 2 cos theta multiplied by v naught so this is the angular momentum r just before collision okay and what is the direction so this is r vector right so if you do r cross v naught uh, you'll get the direction is into the plane so let's call into the page as minus k cap and on the right hand side now the velocity vector has reversed its direction now the velocity vector has reversed its direction so now it's going to be ml by 2 cos theta v naught times v in the plus k cap direction and omega vector is into the plane so i omega is just going to be okay so i about the central axis is ml square by 12 in the k cap direction so this is the angular momentum conservation expression before and after collision so now let's just solve it real quick okay so and after a bit of algebra we'll get this as the second equation so now we can solve the two equations for finding v and omega okay so once you solve the two equations you'll get the angular velocity as this expression so yeah that's it for this question okay guys so that was it for this video if you guys have any doubts you can comment down below and if you enjoyed the video please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching